Now, some Indian airlines have cancelled flights because of massive ash plumes from an Ethiopian volcano. The Haley Gubi volcano has sent smoke and ash 14 kilometers high this Sunday, its first eruption in recorded history. Air India has cancelled 11 flights to make precautionary checks on aircraft that had flown near the volcano. Akasa Air has scrapped some flights to Middle East destinations, including Jeddah, Kuwait and Abu Dhabi. I speak now to Juliet Biggs, who's a professor of Earth Science and co-director of the Centre for the Observation and Modelling of Earthquakes, Volcanoes and Tectonics. She joins us from Bristol. Thank you for joining the programme. Julia, so Haley Gooby has apparently been dormant for around 12,000 years. What could have triggered its eruption now after such a long time? Uh, well, that's, that's a really good question. So the first one is, has it really been dormant for 12,000 years? Um, that's the we have no recorded eruptions, but that doesn't mean it hasn't erupted. If you look at satellite images of the volcanoes, there are a lot of very fresh looking lava flows. So it's quite possible there has been more recent eruptions. We just haven't got scientific data documenting them. And that's not unusual in this this part of the world, this region. Um, but we do have some idea what might have triggered this. Um, the neighbouring volcano called Ertale is uh, persistently active. It has a lava lake at the surface. And it last erupted in July. Um, and at that time, we saw that there was magma moving underground that went actually beneath Haile Gubi and actually con continued further south. So we think this eruption um, at Ertale, the magma intrusion underground associated with that is what's triggered this eruption at Haile Gubi now. And the ash plume has reached up to 14 kilometres in altitude, I believe. What does that tell us about how explosive this eruption was and how dangerous it could be. Yeah, this, this, is, a, this is a really explosive eruption. The, the height of 14 kilometres tells us that there was a really um, fast mass eruption rate in those, those first few hours of, of the eruption. And of course, it would have been very dangerous to, to be uh, nearby. And reports mentioned that there was a, a massive sulfur dioxide release during the eruption. How important is that and what, what are the possible atmospheric or health effects of, of this gas? Um, well, sulfur dioxide is the main volcanic gas we track uh, because it's actually the easiest to track. There's not a lot of it in the background atmosphere, so it really stands out. Um, but actually, there's probably a lot of other gases released, water, carbon dioxide, other things uh, like that that are actually much harder for us to, to measure. Uh, so sulfur dioxide is the, the one we, we track, uh, but really in terms of human health, the main concern is um, the, the ash, which is a problem for aviation, but it's also a problem uh, for people in the area. Um, and there are advisories out for them to wear uh, face masks and things like this. Yeah, tell, tell us a bit more about the concerns around ash uh, from this eruption. We know it's drifted over to Yemen, Oman, uh, even as far as India and Pakistan. Uh, what could this mean for aviation safety and air quality? Um, well, the effects of ash on, on aircraft are, are quite well studied now following the, uh, the eruption in, in Iceland uh, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, and the, the main advice is for flights to avoid ash wherever possible. Um, so as you've just been telling us, flights are rerouted or cancelled uh, to, um, to avoid doing that. Um, so in, in this case, the eruption seems to have died down now. Um, our most recent satellite images, we can see... Uh, the enlarged crater, we can see the pits, but there isn't um, a sustained eruption column. So we think there's no more ash coming out at this time. Um, then the real question is, is there going to be another pulse of activity or, or, or is this it? Yeah, on that point, uh, you already mentioned that this particular volcano, Haley Gooby, is part of uh, a wider volcanic chain, the Eta Alla. Uh, so mm -hmm. what are your concerns now going forward? Do you expect that there will be more volcanic activity and how do you monitor for something like that, given how remote this area is? Well, the, the, the main thing we can do is to can keep monitoring. Um, and there's various ways we do that. So we can use the same satellites that are picking up the, the SO2 and the sulfur dioxide. Um, they've actually been showing us that there's been low level emissions over the last few months. So we can keep tracking that. We have other satellite systems using radar that allow us to see how the ground is moving. And that allows us to see if... Um, magma is moving underground, where it's moving underground. 
And we can also use um, optical images to uh, to track what kind of signs of changes we see um, at the surface of the volcano. Uh, so we're going to be keeping on doing that and, and looking for any sudden changes uh, that we see. OK, good to talk to you. Juliet Biggs, Professor of Earth Science and co-director of the Centre for the Observation of Modelling of Earthquakes, Volcanoes and Tectonics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't miss out. Get the full picture. Subscribe to Al Jazeera for reliable news and expert insights. Like, share, stay ahead.